Hello, hello, dear viewers, friends, and all that. This is TBT here, and welcome to another Art Creature Feature. Today's episode is going to feature not a dinosaur, not a bug, and not a dragon, but a mammal of all things, and a serious one at that. This, ladies, gentlemen, and all of those pronouns, this is Dinotherium. For those of you that are new to this series, this is where I'll be covering this creature's base stats, abilities, where to find it, how to tame one, and ways you can use them to improve your experience in Ark Survival Ascended, or Evolved, for that matter. Um, both apply here. I'll also be talking about my opinions on um, Ark's, or rather Garuga's, take of this creature, since it is a mod, and give it a final score based on all these categories from 1 out of 10. Remember, this is this Dinotherium is not the historical fossilized one that existed in real life. This is a species created and modeled after it according to the lore of the game. At best, it would be an artificially induced evolution, so selective breeding, but like to the nth degree. And therefore, comparing these two, comparing the real life one and this one, apart from, you know, in-game abilities that represent something it did in real life, just doesn't make any sense, so I'm going to avoid that. In particular, size, because most creatures in Ark, even modded, are oversized or undersized. It's also worth noting, again, this is a modded creature. So, um, yeah, it, it's uh, it's definitely not like the vanilla ones. And actually, but it, but it fits in very well with them. So it's it's not like you, you will need to download the mods uh, in order to get it. The, um, was it, Additions Ascended is the name of the mod. Now... Before we go any further, if you enjoy this content, go ahead and give this video a like by clicking that thumbs up button. Be sure to comment and stomp that subscribe button to please the algorithm gods and spread this video around the platform. And uh, turn on notifications so you never miss when a new video from me comes out. It helps out a lot and I greatly appreciate the support. Thank you so much. Alrighty, now that we've taken care of all that, let's dive in. Alrighty, stats. Unlike the last modded creature, uh, well, last Garuga modded creature, this one actually does have base stats that I was able to find, to some degree. Um, so let's let's dig in. Uh, the Dinotherium, it starts out with base stats of 200, uh, 2100 wild HP with an increase of 430 per level and a 3% increase when tamed. When we're talking about base stats, what we mean is that this creature, if we took it at level 1 in which case it would have no additional stat points in any stats. This is what it starts with, and every single creature in the game has base stats at level 1, and as they uh, are spawned in by the game, they will have points allocated randomly among various stats. So what we've got here, so I just wanted to clear that out of the way now, um, they have 450 wild stamina, 150 wild oxygen, um... 8,500 uh, wild food stat and uh, 850 wild weight with plus 17 per wild level and 4% tame bonus. Okay. Unfortunately, that is all we have for the base stat, so I don't have the base melee damage for its attacks. But, uh, you know, it still gives us a good idea what we're looking at here. Needless to say, this is one beefy boy. Like, this a, this a thick-ass boy! Also worth noting that melee that melee stat doesn't really matter anyway because it's um, we, when we talk about melee, what we're saying is the percentage. And all creatures have a 100% at level 1. Uh, the actual damage that they do is based on their um, melee stat percentage times that base damage of their attacks, which is the stat we're missing, and then subtracting any resistances that the enemy may have against them. Alrighty, with that out of the way, let's talk about some of its abilities. Oh, Lord above, the Dinotherium, it's got, it's got a lot of abilities, a lot of things this thing can do. And this damn thing is getting more and more like a modern Pokemon with all the stuff it can do. Next thing you know, it'll be using Stealth Rock. I can't find the base, yeah, I couldn't find the base damage, but uh, we can talk about how they work while you watch me use them to kill things. So strap in, sit down, and get ready. Left click. The basic left click is a double stomp attack, which does respectable damage and can ignore rock elemental armor, which is kind of neat, I guess, if you have these things on a map where there are rock elementals, of which currently, in outside of maybe Svartalheim, there are not. 
Uh, however, if the player is looking sideways on from their camera when on the Dinotherium, the Dinotherium will instead rear up on its hind legs and bring its full weight down on its target, turning to do so as needed. It actually has pretty good tracking on that. Uh, and this is a much more powerful version of the left-click attack, but it can be a little bit of a pain to trigger on command. You're gonna, you may want to practice with it a few times, it, it, but it does hurt. Right-click. This is a Tusk Gore Trunk Swipe, which deals much less knockback than the Stomp or the, um, or the um, Smash. But uh, it deals almost as much damage as the Side Stomp, the uh, Rear Up. And it is a bit faster. It still has a two-second cooldown on it. Um, the, by the way, these attacks harvest different things. The Stomp will harvest berries... Uh, Actually, you'll see you'll see as we go through it. I'll, I'll demonstrate it in a minute. Um, and the right click, I believe, is the wood harvester because this thing can har. There are so many things this thing can harvest. It can even harvest raw meat pretty well too. So bear that in mind. This guy has a lot of uses. We're getting there. Now on to C. C is uh, a rally call, uh, a buff, which is followed by a stunning leg stomp. Although that has been nerfed, so it doesn't stun you. Uh, as badly as it once did, or as uh, as I recall, uh, on Fjorder, I got stunned quite a lot by it when I was trying to tame these, but on this, I got maybe once or twice. Uh, anyway, the Rally Call gives every allied dino in a, in a close distance a buff, depending on the gender of the Dinotherium in question. A male Dinotherium gives a plus 15% to damage and increases stamina regen, while the female buff gives a 5% damage uh, defense buff, and it can stack up to three times, which means an additional 15% defense, defense boost if enough females use this attack. So what that means is, if you had a herd of one male Dinotherium and three females, you could get 15% damage increase, 15% damage resistance, plus uh, stamina regen. And you could get all that in uh, in just from just four creatures, and yes, this does stack with the um, U Tyrannus Roar and any other buffs you may have, provided they do not they do not have a tag that says this doesn't stack. I don't know of any buffs like that outside of mods, so just bear that in mind. Mm. Control this key triggers. Just, this is an aesthetic roar. It just sounds cool, <laughs> and it can be activated while running, uh, but it absolutely does nothing. Uh, and like many pack animals, the alpha, or in this case specifically the highest level male in a herd, gets a buff for being the alpha. Same, I believe, as all other creatures. I could be wrong about that. Oh boy. This was a lot to cover, and please feel free to pause it, go back and review if you need to, take notes, yada yada, whatever you need. Uh, it's got a lot of, this thing has a lot of cool stuff, and probably one of the best taming methods to go along with it. But before we get to that, we are going to cover where you find one of these things. <clears throat> Unfortunately, there is no spawn map that I was able to find, but you can find this creature in and around the island's more open areas. Like, you'll find them near rivers primarily, or in the plains area near Green Obelisk. I see them a lot uh, around the edges of jungles. And it, depending on your spawn rate, you'll usually find them in, in at least pairs, sometimes more. Um... Having recently upped my spawn rates because I wanted a, a damn Gigantoraptor to spawn, I'm noticing they're spawning in threes and fours now. So, yay. But yes, that is where you'll find them. More open areas, and they're always together, and that's important. Well, generally always together unless one of them dies. But yes, that is very important. And you'll see why in just a sec. On to the taming method. You ever sit down and popped open a beer with the boys after a hard work week? Yes? Then get ready for a good time, because that's how you tame this magnificent beast. But before you can do that, you must first make the beer barrel, uh, then craft the beer with water and berries and roughly enough time for, the, for, them, uh, for bones to actually fossilize. <clears throat> Once you have a few of those, head on out to look for your Dinotherium. This is a passive tame, but it's not quite that simple. You can't just walk up and press E. I mean, you, you can, but, but you'll, you'll die. Uh, anyway, there are some things you need to be watchful of. The Dinotherium has an aggressive temperament, so to tame, one, you, uh, to tame one, it needs to be alone. You'll either have to kill or trap the other pack members and get the one you want away from them. 
the Dinotherium will look at you while um, shaking its head with varying positions of the ears and the trunk. Um, and yes, I'm kind of reading off the wiki for this because me explaining it is a problem. So bear with me. Uh, if the ears are out, it is, it's good. But if the ears are out and the trunk is out, you've got a problem. What does that mean? Well, it means exactly what it says. If the trunk is out and not curled to the side, I think. Um, you have to wait until the trunk is rolled up. Yeah, rolled up, curled to the side, and the ears are out. That's your cue that this animal is willing to let you get close to it. You then have to get under its face with the beer in your last hop, beer, hop bar slot, and it'll take that beer automatically from you. You don't have to press anything. It will just reach down and grab it. Repeat this step until it's tamed, but uh, the facial signs may change. Also, um, yeah, it, it, its mood can change in an instant. So it's like you'll get it to feed once. You'll have to back away from it um, and repeat the process all over again. And again, me sitting here reading this doesn't really do it justice. So pay attention to the footage and watch it again if you need to. Or, you know, you can take the funny painful option and get ragdolled like the average Tom and Jerry episode. Props if you're old enough to remember Tom and Jerry, by the way, like the classic Tom and Jerry. Now, now let's say you've tamed your Dinotherium. What can you do with it? Oh boy, it's easier to say what you can't do with this thing. It's like a freaking utility knife with, tr with, tr blech, with tusks and a trunk. And unlike most vanilla herbivores, it can gather meat and hide with its stomp attacks, just like I told you, in addition to the usual berries and thatch. It also can collect fiber and wood, so this thing is so handy. It's a fairy, it's a stego, it's a trike, it is all of that and more. Uh, also, kind of a carno or a rex? Question mark? It does make a great uh, basic resource gatherer, obviously. But with its ability to buff allied creatures, it has a place on almost any boss-killing army, so long as you have two, at least two of the opposite gender. I would say you recommend four with three females, one male. I've used them a lot in my Fjorder playthrough back on ASE to do exactly that. And I'm hoping to again here on ASA, but that does go into one of the biggest drawbacks of this creature. It takes a long time for them to breed, Long time for them to gestate, long time for them to, uh, for the baby to grow. And, um, I'm trying to get the island playthrough done as quickly as possible, so I might not be able to finish that breeding project here. Maybe by the time we get to a, a DLC map, but, uh, not yet. Um, <clears throat> now you, now as mentioned before, the buff does, the buff ability that they have stacks with you, Tyrannus to go back to bosses. So it's an incredibly potent combo in buffing your army in both attack and defense. Truthfully, you could take an army of all females and one male and you'd be fine, but then you're wasting the buff because it only stacks three times. But again, it takes so long to raise them to adulthood. That is the only negative I can give them. And it's for a good reason, so it's not really even a negative. I also keep flicking my, my enter key, my far right enter key with my hand there. So that's unfortunate really annoying because it keeps moving the script back up like i said very multi-purpose creature it's a harvester it's a meat gatherer it's a uh, it's a boss killer it's everything you need it to be i don't think it's i think while the buff might help you against the um extinction titans these creatures would probably not be up to the task of fighting the king titan i think that's uh if it ain't a giga it's gonna die <laughs> and it probably will die anyway if it ain't the mega mech Anyway, um, yeah, there's so much this thing does, and it's good at almost all of it. Okay. Now, considering how much I've gushed about this thing, it's no wonder I'm just going to spoil it now. I'm going to rate this thing pretty highly. It hits hard. It has a great intimidating look to it that's not just like a plain old gray elephant-looking creature. It's got nice markings. It's got some fuzz on it. I think it is a little bit too fuzzy, but the creative license goes a long way. And Garuga went above and beyond making this creature and then bringing it over to ASA. Um, and again, and I'm going to give him another shout out here. This creature is just incredible. But back on topic, it looks amazing. It is amazing mechanically. Almost too much, I would say. It might be a little too good at everything that it does. But that's neither here nor there. The other thing is it feels like it belongs in this game. It feels like, an, like a creature that would exist in Ark. 
based on what Wildcard would do. And that to me is the mark of an amazing mod. When, if that's your goal in making the mod, to make the creature feel like it belongs, this succeeds on every level. Uh, and honestly, that is the ultimate praise I could give a modded creature, in my opinion. It feels like it should be and is vanilla. <laughs> so much so that it was one of the first mods released when ASA came out. And because of that, this creature gets a solid 10 tusk attacks out of 10. Alrighty, I think that covers basically everything about the Dinotherium. I hope you liked this video and found it helpful. If you did, go ahead and stomp that like button, comment, subscribe, and please the God, algorithm gods to spread this video around the platform. It really does help me out, and I greatly appreciate the support. Uh, and I really hope I sold you on this creature. Like, it, it's kind of a... It's more a pain to make the taming food that you need to go tame it, but the taming method is really, really interesting. So... As long as you're paying attention, you'll do fine, and uh, it shouldn't be too terribly hard to get uh, get a couple of them. And if you can do it, do it. Anyway, this has been TBT. I'm signing off, and I'll catch y'all on the next Our Creature Feature.